so here they come. be for the faithful Nottingham Forest trainer Jimmy Gordon getting his share of the glory Brian Clough saying well you lead him out this year John Barnwell nearest the camera the man who had a terrible car crash just a year ago and uh, he's leading a side out of Wembley with his captain Emlyn Hughes who's won every domestic honour possible with Liverpool but he's never won a League Cup for his medal in their third successive final 1978 having beaten Liverpool last season having beaten Southampton Wolves who won the cup here the League Cup in 1974 and well, the inimitable figure of Brian Clough having given uh, Jimmy Gordon the chance to lead out his team Peter Taylor behind him with Richie Barker the assistant manager of Wolves they are in fact very great friends and it was Peter Clough and Brian Taylor who bought Richie Barker when they were in charge at Derby County. And John McCall, the big Wolves defender who broke his leg in the cup tie against Watford. striker Andy Gray and John Barnwell the manager
to the anthems. Let's take a check on the two teams, starting with Nottingham Forest. Without Stan Bowles, of course, who is cup-tied. He played in an earlier round for Queen's Park Rangers. Ian Bowyer takes his place. And, just as important, without Larry Lloyd, serving that one-match suspension. And so David Needham comes into the defence to play his tenth game of the season. John McGovern is their captain. As for Wolves, well, they had a scare in the week when Kenny Hibbert had a thigh strain, but Kenny decided he was fit to play, and so Colin Brazier is named as a substitute. And Jeff Palmer also felt a twinge of a thigh strain yesterday, but he trained hard, and he's also named in this school side, with Emlyn Hughes, their captain. Well, a meeting of two million pound players here today, that's the first ever at Wembley, Trevor Francis of Nottingham Forest has suddenly found some good goal-scoring form to go with his other schools, five in the last four games. And Andy Gray, goal-scoring is something that is eluding him at the moment, only two in the last 16 games, but he's played an enormous part in getting Wolves to this final. Indeed, only plays today because West Ham beat Aston Villa in the Cup last week and got through his one-match suspension when Wolves played Villa last Monday. is David Richardson from Great Harwood in Lancashire who in fact uh, gave West Ham that penalty in the last minute last week against Aston Villa that in a roundabout way enables Andy Gray to play today. Oh, the Forest fans are saluting David Needham. a very colourful collection of flowers there in front of the Royal Box on a really grey day. And uh, we're also hoping it'll be an Andy Grey day, I suppose. Emlyn Hughes. sitting there very composed at the moment Peter Taylor and Brian Clough and a little further to the left are their arch foes today and there's Richie Barker and John Barnwell they face 90 minutes of agony now of these crowds who've come down from the Midlands is almost over. The referee having a last look around to make sure that everything is right. David Richardson from Great Harwood. And it'll be Nottingham Forest there poised to kick off this 1980 Football League Cup final. You can only assume that they've got through the preliminaries a little quicker than most people thought. And we've a moment or two to go to get to three o'clock. Well, we're on our way now. It's Nottingham Forest 
seeking to become the first club to win the Football League Cup for three successive seasons. In the red shirts and white shorts, attacking the goal to our right. Wolves, the winners in 1974, in the famous old gold shirts and black shorts. Hibbett, a little header aimed towards Berry, and played back there, and Bradshaw got to come out quickly and was shielded by Emlyn Hughes. And so Paul Bradshaw with the kick. Needham beaten in the air by Andy Gray. Anderson in there, it will only go as far as Hibbert. Both sides had good form earlier in the week. Wolves winning at Villa. And that's and uh, Nottingham Forest beating Spurs 4 0. And Boya chasing after that one, but Daniel in there finding Berry. Peter Daniel again. Hughes. I was about to say that his contribution could be enormous in these opening minutes, calming down this Wolves side with all the experience he's got, but it was Emlyn, in fact, who made a quite elementary mistake, but he recovered quickly enough. Here's Carr for Wolverhampton. Derek Clark in. Played high there, but Kenny Burns cutting that out for Forrest. Oh, yeah, for Gray. Very back to Rachel. Needham and Gray. Jostle there and Andy Gray winning that ball in the air, flicking it on. I think we're going to see a lot of that this afternoon, and it's Mel Eves playing it here for Hibbert, and Hibbert in turn now playing it for Parker. It's towards Palmer, but it wasn't a particularly good ball, but Hibbert able to pick it up again. Oh, yeah, battling for it and winning it, and slipping it forward here for Martin O'Neill. And now Richards. Free kick to Woods. Or rather to Nottingham Forest. <laughs> Kenny Burns. Slow motion stuff there. Looking to pick up somebody. And it's Frank Gray. A little surging run of his own taking on Wolves there and finding Gary Burpers. A forest throw. Robertson now to play. Robertson again. This will come for Boya. Well, a chest trap that slid away from him, and here's Hibbert. A long ball out here. Oh, and it'll come nonetheless to Richards. It was a dive by Needham that tried to get that ball away. Richards battling, and uh, between them, Needham and Anderson getting away what could have been a really ticklish situation that for Nottingham Forest. Liv Anderson certainly played his part, but here's Emlyn Hughes on the ball again now for Wolves. Oh, here's Hedder, not getting a lot of distance on it. Hibbert trying to play it towards Willie Carr. Oh, yeah. Planting it wide there. And Berthel's finding Robertson. Flicked inside for Martin O'Neill. Playing very much into the central regions at the moment, O'Neill. And it's Trevor Francis who's away on this right-hand side. Looking to give him a bit of space to get that acceleration going, maybe. It's Kenny Burns at the moment. McGovern, it was a little too high for him. Anderson coming in. Oh. A little challenge there that looks a pretty hard one indeed and it gets a yellow card for Viv Anderson. And uh, Emin Hughes urging the trainer to come on and John Richards really felt that challenge. It was a 50-50 ball as Anderson and Richards came for it. And just look how the right boot of Viv Anderson clattered into John Richards. 
think it's a cut somewhere on the left knee. Well, that's with five minutes gone. And that might have repercussions. Oh, he seems to be moving that knee fairly freely now. Such an important member of the Wolves strike force, John Richards, who scored the winner here when uh, Wolves beat Manchester City in 1974. It's not really characteristic of uh, Viv Anderson, but it's a free kick quite properly given, and the yellow card quite properly given. Played towards Andy Gray. We're going to see a lot of that with Hughes planting high balls. It's something that Wolves have been practising a lot, aiming for Gray to get the flick on for people like Hibbert to go in behind Frank Gray. That's what they were aiming for then. In fact, they got a free kick. And there was a little bit of clumsiness there. And Andy Gray trying to get a shot in, but Viv Anderson with the header. And blocking that shot there by Andy Gray, giving away the corner. So a corner for Wolves, George Berry coming up. So he's right up there, well inside that penalty area, as parking crosses, but behind for the goal. Barry Bertels. People wondering whether the speed of Bertels and Francis might unsettle Emlyn Hughes. There's that long ball forward again, but this time it's Richards trying to get up above Burns, but it's Kenny Burns who won that one for Forrest, and here's Bertels on one of his runs again. Hughes sticking very close with him, and just seeing enough of the ball to get in there and get in the challenge. Francis with the throw for Anderson. Wolves fans booing Anderson for that challenge on John Richards. Needham spreading it wide to John Robertson on the far side. Daniel is the number four, shadowing him there. It's that little check inside, gives him the yard, finds Boya. That'll come out from McGovern. Francis again. And now it's a forest court. Conceded by Derek Parkin. Bertels and Needham out there, you'll notice inside the Wolves six-yard area as Trevor Francis takes his corner. Four Nottingham Forest. There is Heather. Not a lot of distance on it, though. Martin O'Neill trying to make something of it, but fails. And Frank Gray in the end. Not only makes a clearance, but makes it a very good pass to find Trevor Francis. Needham had stayed up there. Burns. Very away. High towards Richards. Needham winning that quite comfortably in the air. Hibbert trying to get something. And Hughes have gone for it as well, and they confused each other. Bertels again making one of his strong, aggressive runs. And what a ball played in there for Robertson. Not offside, it must have been precious close. Frank Gray up in support. Robertson again, laying it to him as often as they can. Daniel again watching him closely. Can Robertson get to that byline? He pulls it back this time for O'Neill. Francis trying to get in there, half gets a shot in, Edmund Hughes right in there, and almost, well, could so easily have been an own goal there by the Wolves captain. Hughes really under enormous pressure there, as Francis gets his shot in. And there's Hughes, what a dilemma with three Forest players around him. What a corner it was. 
And here comes that corner. Floated in there. Bradshaw punching it away. And Hibbert finally getting away, but it'll be McGovern picking it up, calling Frank Gray towards him. Here's Gray. And a promising start this now by Nottingham Forest. Ten minutes gone. Robertson again trying to get down that byline. Forest get a throw. So David Needham again up on the edge of that Wolves penalty area. Gray. O'Neill. Challenge strongly but fairly on the edge of that box by Berry. Just one man up for Wolves. Kenny Burns getting it back to short. Gray. Hughes glancing it back. That's a Wolves throw. Richards, Hibbett, played towards Andy Gray, Needham got up well though, and what was good for Forrest is it comes straight to the feet of Trevor Francis with Anderson making a tremendous break through the middle for him, good play here by Forrest, O'Neill tries to get it on again for Francis, now they've got it out for Robertson, but... That was a great break by Francis, but an even better one by Dave Anderson, with the throw. Gray playing for Willie Carr. Now Hughes. Parkin. Too high for Gray. Jeff Palmer. Frank Gray's after this one. Could have been an awkward bounce, and that was what he was worried about. And here's Gray again. Set on his way swiftly there by Shilton's little throw. Played in by Robertson. The lines were flagging on this side from offside against Martin O'Neill. Being challenged by Needham, unfairly so, free kick. There he goes again, George Berry. Parkin with the free kick. Bowyer with the header away. Nicely into the path of Martin O'Neill. Now Francis. It's a little bit of acceleration. Parkin supported by Emlyn Hughes, but he still finds Burgess with it. Now McGovern, will he try a shot? Certainly early on, uh, Forrest are using the width of this Wembley pitch very well. They've tried to feed Robertson as often as they can, and they've had Francis making some good runs down this right-hand side, but at the moment it's Hibbert here for Wolves, but a misunderstanding between him and Eves. Now Eves, who scored such an important goal in the semi-final against Swindon, that got Wolves here. Eaves Park in to Berry Palmer in for Hibbert with a quarter of an hour gone, no score 
with its long ball forward, aiming at Andy Gray. Nodded back there by Kenny Burns, which, well, you might say it was a bit of a gamble with Gray menacing him so much. He's a cool customer. And back to the other end. Barry Palmer. Robertson. Challenged by Palmer was a bit fierce, but the ball was already out of play. Eves, Parkin, and John Richards is on the far side there, Shilton, not under so much pressure, but Shilton really didn't do as well as you would expect him to do there, and the ball was loose for a fraction of a second there, but here's a little nod on for Bertle by Bertle's for O'Neill. towards Andy Gray. Frank Gray. Fantastic head of a ball, Andy Gray. It's surprising to find he hasn't scored a headed goal this season. But he's up there challenging all the time and giving David Needham quite a few problems. Those little flick-ons that they're going to be looking for to get in behind that Wolves the uh, Forest defence. by uh, Frank Gray. O'Neill. Robertson. All just in play. Crowd was shouting, but the linesman was almost bent double, making sure that he got it right. Now Bertels. Ahead of him is O'Neill. Away on the left, if he wants him, is Robertson. And in fact, it comes for John Robertson now. Taking on Peter Daniel, trying to get to that by line but Daniel was always that side of him and so Paul Bradshaw joining Wolves from Blackburn Rovers takes another goal kick again Andy Gray flicking that ball on but Kenny Burns was in there quickly behind that situation Trevor Francis is walking went for that one. The forest throw. Well, that's a free kick. That must have been the challenge by Parkin. On Francis. Viv Anderson with it. Clouted there towards Martin O'Neill. George Berry getting up well for Wolves. Gray back here for Willie Carr. Gray back again for Willie Carr. Now good ball by Carr there. And now a chance for Daniel to take it up. Great burst from the midfield by Peter Daniel. And suddenly it's opened up. But the shot is across the face of that Forest goal and behind. But a beautiful surging run there by the former Hull City man, Peter Daniel. Really aggressive running, really taking them on. And suddenly at this point it opened up with Eves outside him. But Daniel tried the shot himself. And it really hadn't the power or direction. Another free kick for Wolves. The ball moving when Evan Hughes took it, and he'll have to take it again. Parking with the kick. Might well be that Gray 
three. There is the target man. In fact, it's going to be Richards. Needham's right in there. And in the end, well, there were two Forest defenders, both Needham and Burns going for that. And they miscued there, as indeed did Frankie Gray. And Randy Gray sees the funny side of it as Wolves get the corner. But Frankie Gray maybe not quite so happy. Oh, and the, it was little Willie Carr who got that header in after George Berry's back flick at the near post. There's Berry's flick, and there's Willie Carr's little header. Now we have Martin O'Neill to Viv Anderson. Here's Trevor Francis. Leading quickly there towards Bertels, but quicker still was Berry. Richards trying to play it wide there for Andy Gray. Wolves felt there was a foul there, but the referee didn't want to know. Oh yeah, Bertels, Robertson, Gray, sweeping it here for Vim Anderson. O'Neill now playing more on this right-hand side. A little flick in there for Francis, across the goal there, and it needed just a touch-in by Bertels, and it was of all people in and Hughes who was caught out by that burst of activity, and how brilliant it was by Trevor Francis. The little flick there by O'Neill, and suddenly Francis has outwitted Emlyn Hughes, and Bertels couldn't find the touch. Oh, yeah. Shrugged off it unfairly by Barry, free kick to Nottingham Forest. for Forrest through the years but Robertson with this free kick Kenny Burns with a downward header towards Boyer goal kick Spotted that though. <laughs> O'Neill for Francis. Nice close skills there, but in the end, taking on a little too much. Robertson, Bertels. Fell nicely for him until Barry again was able to see enough of the ball to go the way. George Berry, a Welsh international, though he was born in West Germany. O'Neill. That's a good little cross. And Bradshaw had to grab that one, and it was Anderson who was right in the six yard area for Forrest. but there was an assault on McGovern that was outside the laws it's a free kick for Forrest David Needham with it now Francis offside against O'Neill Burns went into that 
Edo with his feet rather high, in fact. Came back very luckily for Anderson. And now through for shoot. doggedly there for Emlyn Hughes and now Daniel good challenge and a quick one there by Frank Gray miscue by Jeff Palmer and uh, Bertels thumped to the ground by George Berry and a free kick to Forrest Robertson finding Kenny Burns Gray Frankie Gray. Oh, Bertels getting in behind them a little bit. Across there, but O'Neill couldn't find the angle. And in fact, it's off a Wolves defender for the corner. Already taken by Robertson. Now Gray. Good cross there. Kenny Burns trying to get up so high to, to beat them all. And uh, Richards running across McGovern. There was no intentional foul there. But it certainly halted John Richards, and Wolves get a free kick. Parkin, Needham, Anderson, it's a Wolves throw. Berry, Gray's header. playing it in there. Needham's header. And a throw. Parkins throw, giving a bit of space there for Richards. And Boyer finding Robertson. A lot of space down on that left flank for Nottingham Forest. Gray supporting him. Oh, he has gone wide now. Here's McGovern. And now Francis. Trying to get a 1 2 going, but Francis's initial pass was inaccurate. Now by Needham. Free kick quickly taken, but. Was taken at least three or four yards from where Mr. Richardson wanted it. Now, if you're honest, any advantage that should have been going Wolves' way is completely lost. But the letter of the law dominating. Hibbert with a shot that's high over the crossbar. an authentic Wembley atmosphere even though the weather is not what they call traditional Wembley sunshine weather Eves stopped very acrobatically there by Bertels and that pass too much telegraph by Boyer cut out by Palmer and it's Daniel with a long ball towards Richards but it's Needham just knocking it off the top of his head and Francis couldn't quite keep it in play. A throw to Wolves. Hit. 
Kivit. Andy Gray on the far side, just beaten in the air by the jump of Kenny Burns. Robertson now for McGovern. Frank Gray. Bertles. Robertson. And again, it's Frank Gray right in there. O'Neill just on side. Frankie Gray all the way through. And he couldn't quite finish it off. Well, an unexpected and an explosive run there by the Forest number three, Frankie Gray. Going all the way. And that little one, too. Wolves thought for a moment it may have been offside, but that was a beautiful ball played into him by Martin O'Neill. He just couldn't get himself together to get in the shot that would really have counted. Wanderers, Wanderers, a good floated cross there towards Andy Gray. Mel Eames is in there looking for something that might come his way, but the whistle had gone. And a yellow card for Kenny Burns. Or something he said, presumably. Two forest yellow cards, one for Viv Anderson, one for Kenny Burns. Francis brought down by Emin Hughes. And there was some signaling on the forest bench just now, which seems to have indicated Trevor Francis playing in a much more forward role. messages came from the Clough Taylor bench there the feeling seems to have been to have pushed Terra Francis into a more forward position McGovern stopped by Willie Carr Richards opening the ball in there but it won't fall for Hibbert it's for Frank Gray instead and that very nearly fell for Peter Daniel and it was a lucky rebound there for Forrest off John Robertson Gray just flicking it on once more for Richards and a free kick for Forrest and I can't for the life of me see what that could have been given for so Peter Shelton getting that wall lined up to cover every possibility Willie Carr and Kenny Hibbett behind the ball for Wolves. Willie Carr with a little floaty cross and Viv Anderson getting it away. Daniel playing it there for Parkin. And now for Emlyn Hughes. Kenny Hibbett. And Needham's header that was required for Nottingham Forest, Boya. Ooh, straight to Berry. Palmer. Daniel. A lot of space here for Parkin. There he is. Again, that ball. Well, that was hit too firmly that time. Parkin himself wasn't happy with it. And Shilton aiming at turning defence into attack. Hughes' his header going straight to O'Neill. Now Boya. Here's Anderson. Bertels, Anderson, O'Neill, McGovern, and now Needham, Anderson.
of it. Willie Carr again. Richards shaking off O'Neill. But he couldn't shake off McGovern. And then O'Neill finds Berthels. Anderson, Hughes sticking out the leg. Willie Carr. And now Carmen. Good little bit of pressure this by Wolves. As Peter Daniel now takes it up, and he'll really run at them. Carr, floating one in there. Palmer had gone up and stayed up, and it... In the end, is Robertson playing it back over the foot quite dangerously there to Peter Shilton. tries to send uh, Anderson on, but Anderson had strayed a yard offside. So back he has to come. with the throw for Forrest as we come to about six and a half minutes to half time Willie Carr playing it into space here for John Richards who's got Andy Gray waiting in the middle but also there for Nottingham Forest was Kenny Burns Farmer to Berry and for Parkin here for Eves. Anderson holding off him. But he's supported there by David Needham. Finally away to Martin O'Neill. Now Bo. McGovern. Forrest working a bit of space for themselves there. And McGovern making very good use of it. Played into there by McGovern for Berthels. Francis through the middle. Taking that ball nicely in his stride, but forced away by Palmer. But nonetheless, there's McGovern with the shot. And behind for the corner. Bradshaw looking pleased with that little bit of uh, activity. And in fact, it came off very from McGovern's shot. So Bradshaw now faced with this corner from Trevor Francis. Fisting it just with one fist away. It'll come from McGovern again, and that might go anywhere. Bertels, and again, the Wolves defence was equal to it. And this time, there's a foul by Peter Daniel on John Robertson. And that could so easily have been the opening goal. That ball was bobbing around there. It might have gone anywhere. And there's Bertels' shot off the keeper as he was falling. Now, Robertson with this free kick. Played there for Frank Gray, lifted high over that crossbar. Goal no kick to Wolves. Well, 
well. It was at least he got his body in the way of that shot from Bertels, but I don't think Paul Bradshaw could have known much about it. Bertels, who scored two here last year, must have thought for a moment that he was carrying where he left off against Southampton. Bradshaw with the kick. O'Neill with the header. Francis against Emlyn Hughes. Oh, pulled back, and that's got to be a yellow card for Emlyn Hughes. Free kick. And I tell you what, well, Emlyn's not happy with uh, something that Trevor Francis was doing there, but he deliberately pulled Trevor Francis back. I mean, as we wait for the free kick to be taken, now that could go unpunished. Well, that's beyond me. So Emlyn Hughes may be a little lucky, irrespective of what Trevor Francis may or may not have done leading up to that situation. It's a free kick for Nottingham Forest. O'Neill blasting it through that ball, but right into the arms of Paul Bradshaw. And offside. with a header. Berry, long ball forward, Andy Gray, right up there, Richards up there supporting, Daniel's made a terrific break down the right for him, there's Daniel with the cross, and off Frankie Gray for the corner to Wolves. Which Peter Daniel himself will take. Daniel went with the corner. Needham with the header away. Francis first to react. Floats it here for Anderson. Good piece of play there by Trevor Francis. O'Neill's up ahead of him. Bertels waiting. Here's Bertels. O'Neill. And now Bowyer from McGovern. Robertson waiting on the far side. Every time he gets it, Daniel comes so close to him and closes him right down, and that time it's Palmer stopping Bertels, but it's Forrest who get the throw. Inside the last two minutes of the first half now. Robertson. Little right foot cross there towards Martin O'Neill. Couldn't quite get down on the header the way he wanted to. See that little gesture of annoyance there. But Robertson beginning to get one or two good crosses in. there by Palmer, turned in nicely there by Daniel for Richards, here's Hibbett Peter Daniel again, oh but that ball's fallen straight to Forrest to carry Bertels Kenny Burns shoved from behind by Andy Gray free kick having a game on their own for a little while, but now it's Needham. O'Neill. Here come. Hughes. McGovern. O'Neill, a nice little touch there. McGovern, the rather Anderson knew what was coming. He finds Trevor Francis. 
Owen hit it straight at Nelly's in the end, but he was trying to work something a bit special there with Francis, and it's Willie Carlo for Wolves instead. Richards, Gray. Bob and Stoffing in. Now Boya. Played a minute of time added on. As Frank Gray takes it up. There's a half-time whistle. A goal is first half. And a League Cup final splendidly poised. Brian Clough goes off to the dressing and he said recently that he finds it hard to motivate his team, but certainly Forrest have given so much in terms of enthusiasm. Richie Barker going off there as well for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Welcome back to Wembley. Let's first of all get a view from the Wolves manager, John Jarnwell, with Martin Tyler. How do you feel Tyler. the game's going from the Wolves' point of view? Yeah, well, tactically, I'm quite pleased. Um, we could have exerted probably a bit more pressure on them, but uh, so far, I'm quite pleased, yes. What have you been saying, you and Richie Barker, in the dressing room? Well, we, our shape and form of the side is quite good. We've got to, we've got to uh, get just a little bit tighter with Bertels. He's, he's just turning us a little bit and running at us. We're allowing him just a little bit too much room. But apart from that, uh, quite pleased. That's the main threat you feel yes, from indeed. Forrest? Oh yes, yes indeed. And of course France is turning and running at us, but Bertels is the one that causes the problems. Your tactical plan has kept John Robertson very quiet. Yes, uh, we're quite pleased with that. But, uh, Peter Downs is doing a good job for us, and, um, and certainly Kenny Hibbert's getting a fair bit of the ball, but I think we can get the ball forward a lot quicker. Are you a little worried that you haven't really made any great chances in the first half? Uh, not really, not really. We've, we had, we had one exceptional chance, which was uh, Willie Carr's, and uh, I thought John Richards might have driven on into the box. But uh, quite pleased, I settled for no score at half-time. You did tell me during this League Cup run, John, you were worried that the, the players might freeze on big occasions. Well, Are you they, haven't, they, haven't, they haven't frozen today. I think they played today. John, thanks very much. We'll let you get on. Thank you. So the views there of John Barnwell, the Wolves manager, as we now await the start of this second half. Well, we've heard what John Barnwell said. I'm wondering what Brian Clough and Peter Taylor said in that Nottingham Forest dressing room at half-time. Certainly it appeared that Trevor Francis was pushed very much more forward into that Wolves penalty area during the latter stages of that first half, and I would think that's probably a tactic that they will continue with in the second half. It's going to be Wolves then who are preparing to kick off the start of this second half. And so away we go with the start of the second half. Wolves in the old gold shirts and black shorts attacking the goal to our right. And the ball back. There's a free kick to Wolverhampton Wanderers, who beat Burnley and Crystal Palace, Queen's Park Rangers, Grimsby and Swindon to get here. Forest, who got past Blackburn, Middlesbrough, Bristol City, West Ham and Liverpool. Forest, in fact, with a more difficult run through to Wembley. playing their 50th game today at Forest. And a header across the goal there, which could so easily have caught Nottingham Forest out. Mel Eves, who came late on that far side, I think when Forest were looking more at George Berry than anybody else, but there's Eves coming in, stooping low there. If one Wolves man could just have got a touch. Palmer playing it forward. Frank Gray getting it away. Here's Hibbert. Now Richards. And Shilton comfortably behind. A not very hard hit shot. Francis. I think the buzz around Wembley, certainly amongst the Forest fans, must have been that this fellow with his pace and skill would certainly be the match winner. And what if McGovern plays too many tricks like that? I think lost touch of that situation, the Forest captain. No harm coming, it's a throw. 
such a very consistent player, John McGovern, through the seasons for Forest. Played in all three of these League Cup finals. Romeo O'Neill and Robertson have done likewise. Bertels played inside very quickly, but Hughes was back in time to play it back for Bradshaw. Fair, and here's Daniel, who's had a really good first Wembley appearance so far. Really challenging runs coming forward. Willie Clark, apparently doing all that prompting in midfield for Wolves, and here's Parkin to Berry. Swept wide here for Park. Gray versus Needham, and Needham. Duncan Gray in the back, it's a free kick for Wolves. It's Willie Carr, floating in there again towards Andy Gray. Again, Needham was sticking right close to him. Martin O'Neill with Anderson outside him. Anderson, but Eve's playing it back. to put it past Bradshaw again and he did, here's Boyer but he couldn't keep close enough control and the ball fell close enough to Palmer for Wolves to get themselves out of a very dodgy spot indeed suddenly it was a little bit of slackness in that centre of the Wolves defence and it looked for all as though Burton's of speed might carry the day from Kenny Burns but Needham winning it in the air from Richards but here's Willie Carr chance to float another one in high towards Peter Daniel who'd gone right in there it'll come for Hibbert to blast one but blast it wide into that little posse of photographers there well wide of the forest goal Kenny Hibbert who scored the first goal for Wolves when they won here in 74 Peter Shelton with the kick for Forrest. Good atmosphere now. Kenny Burns with the header. Richard's just picking it on, but Andy Gray. Well, he's pointing, hopefully, and looking accusingly at the linesman, but in fact, Andy Gray was maybe two yards offside. O'Neill to Anderson. Carr. Oh, a nice ball 
played here for Daniel. Palmer, Hibbert. And again, Kenny Burns getting in before Andy Gray, but Andy Gray playing wide there. Quickly spotted that, and so did Peter Daniel spot the possibilities here. The little cross coming in, but off McGovern behind for the corner. And if Daniel could have just got that cross in a little quicker, who knows? As it is, they've got a corner. George Berry has come up for it as well. Wolves fans sensing that something might be about to happen. Chip towards the near post. Berry looking for a backward header, but it was headed out by Forrest. Now it's with Hibbert, just clipping it in there, but here's Frank Gray playing it here for Bertels to stretch his legs. Plays it wide here for Francis. There's so much pace up front for Forrest, if only they could use it. And here's Francis now. They're running straight into Palmer and straight into trouble. And here's Daniel now for Wolves. And Andy Gray played on side by David Needham, a one against one if Gray can do something with it. Allowed to go on there by the referee. Now, can Andy Gray do something here? Played it across, Bowyer, reliable as ever, gets back. And plays it to that other reliable character, always available, John McGovern. A good piece of play, though, by Ian Bowyer. And now here's Forrest setting up the pace with Martin O'Neill. Francis is offside, and that was a lovely piece of play by O'Neill because he realised it and went on his own. In the end, to be brought down, and Wolves have conceded a free kick, or is it? No, they've got one. But that was a tremendous piece of vision there, really, by Martin O'Neill. He sensed that Francis was offside there and thought, well, I've got to go on my own and see what happens. And in the end, he's maybe in on the back of Emlyn Hughes, and that's why the free kick was given. Hibbert comes in and bangs one way over the crossbar. I think they were telling Trevor Francis that he's got to come back and make an extra man in the wall. But it's a goal kick to Nottingham Forest. A rousing start to the second half, but still goalless. Sadly for them, it went the wrong way. Well, that was a good piece of play by Palmer, just when Bertels looked fairly menacing, and a good ball played by Frank Gray to John Robertson. Trying to get it to the byline again, but Palmer is well aware of that one. And it's a corner. Needham's up, and Burns is up. Palmer, who conceded the corner at the near post, having trouble with his right boot. Robertson with the corner. Andy Gray got that away to Kenny Hibbert. The long ball. Cut out by McGovern. Now Frank Gray again. Robertson outside him. Robertson gets to this byline this time. There's the cross coming in. Needham is there. Bradshaw didn't get a touch. O'Neill turning it back again. Needham with the header just over. That's the nearest anybody's been to scoring today. Bradshaw didn't get a touch there, not really a positive one. O'Neill kept his head, found a lovely little cross in there. David Needham had gone up and stayed up with a header that was just too high. Parking for Wolves. Anderson. 
Another forest throw. Francis brought down by Park in the free kick. A lot of pressure on that Wolves bench as well as there is on the Wolves defence. Needham with the free kick for Forrest. Perry. And now Forrest throw. No, no, it is. Francis. That time Eve stopped him. trying to bring a bit of order to that central area for Wolves but it's Frank Gray here for Nottingham Forest blocked by two Wolves defenders a little back heel there for John Robertson a good floating cross by him O'Neill's and with Bradshaw's only half pulling it away Francis would spell this for Forest. Bertles nodding it down for O'Neill back for Gary Bertles again and Jeff Palmer just getting it back and a free kick an unfair jump by Viv Anderson Eric Parkin with the free kick and two of them go for it and Peter Shelton couldn't stop it going beyond the byline for the corner. Both Needham and Burns go in for that high ball, which is not like them at all. Mind this, usually Lloyd and Burns at the centre of the defence. Just slight readjustments that need to be made. Here's the corner, Hibbert. There he is right in there, trying to get a backward header. O'Neill missed kicks, but McGovern didn't. Burns is back there with a saving header. Eves is in there. Berry is up there, but the flag is up for an offside against George Berry, who was just offside for a fraction. Long enough. And a bit of respite now for Forrest. David Needham. To Viv Anderson. Quarter of an hour of the second half gone. Francis, back there, there's no way back though, that's blocked by Harry Bertel's late run. Yes, a shot in the back by Needham on Gray, and Gray asking for protection from the referee. David Needham's been sticking so close to him, too close in fact. That's why this free kick's been given, which... Derek Parkin is taking for Wolves. High again towards Andy Gray, winning it in the air. Pivot trying to go free, but Anderson was back there and across there. Pivot claiming handball, the referee didn't want to know. Free kick now to Forrest. It's a brave man who'd uh, name the winners now. Still nil-nil, still superbly poised. Kenny Burns on the ball for Nottingham Forest. Floated towards Needham who'd gone up, but another fall for Peter Daniel. Oh yeah, struggling to get back and succeeding, but here's Palmer. That's a Wolves throw. Forest beat Wolves 3-2 in the league uh, at the city ground Nottingham back in October. We're a long way from that sort of goal scoring at the moment, still 0-0. Richards, Hibbert, Carr, 
Give it in there before O'Neill, but he had to pick on that one. That was a good piece of play by O'Neill again that forced that error. Francis to McGovern. And McGovern in a bit of trouble there. And it's Hibbert and Carr between them who've got it away and got it away to good effect to John Richards. Andy Gray and Kenny Hibbert waiting in the middle. And coming up late is Peter Daniel, but Robertson had gone back with him. Laid it on neatly there for Frank Gray. Cut out by Eminem Hughes as well for him that he did. The linesman was flagging though. Francis would have been offside. The referee decided to allow play to go on. Hughes finding Willie Carr. Played in towards the near post towards Andy Gray. Needham was shadowing him well. What a good clearance that by Kenny Burns. But here's Robertson. Two have gone running forward. Francis and O'Neill, but it wasn't a particularly good ball. Park in now for Berry. As Wolves take possession again. Here's John Robertson. But now the ball with Peter Daniel. Floated towards Andy Gray. A little bit of space there for him. And Needham acrobatically getting that back. That was real touch and go, but it succeeded. The long ball there, played by Frank Gray. Berry holding off the challenge of Burgess. It's a good second half, requiring just a goal or two, really, to set it up into something very special indeed. Richards. That's a free kick to Fleur Wolves. Hughes. Parkin. Hibbets. Well, might yet come for the Wolves as Willie Carr now plays it for Peter Daniel. Palmer and Needham heading that away when he didn't really have to do that. That was falling quite gently for Peter Shilton. Pushing everybody forward now, Wolves. Hughes now spraying it wide here for Andy Gray. And a really active game as Andy Gray taking a lot of stick but taking up some good positions. McGovern getting that one away. Hughes trying to close on it quickly. An advantage there played by the referee, though nothing came Wolves' way in the first place, but they've got a free kick now. or twice in this game that forest wall has been pierced pivot crawling away from the scene of his crash it's about 25 yards out Willie Carr is going to touch the ball I would think to Kenny Hibbert or no a little chip himself towards Andy Gray just a little too high for Andy to get what he wanted on it but it's still with Peter Daniel floating again towards Andy Gray and again not quite the header he wanted but Shilton's in trouble but there was a foul on the keeper and for all the pressure yes he's applauding the referee's decision <laughs> but with the greatest respect to this very fine keeper he's a little out of confidence when things are in the air and he's under pressure Quite properly, the free kick was given. Now Palmer. Now Gray. A little touch by Bertels. Doesn't find Robertson. Daniel playing it towards Andy Gray, could be interesting, and this is the goal, Andy Gray has scored it! Needham and Shilton got in a terrible mix, and Andy Gray has the simplest of jobs to put Wolves into the lead. The long ball forward there by Peter Daniel.
Daniel should Peter Shorten have come for this one there you can see the misunderstanding and what a simple chance for Andy Gray Nottingham Forest nil, Wolves one the scorer is Andy Gray only two goals in the last 16 games and my word he's made one count today now it's Richards and you really got to question whether Peter Shilton was ever going to get that ball as it came in from that free kick from Daniel well there's delight at that end as the ball is floating in again towards Andy Gray but it's too high for him that time Forest of Wolves colours there, and they're all cheering the goal scored by Andy Grove. Anderson to Bertels. Half Forest going to be denied three successive wins. Anderson right forward. Here's Martin O'Neill. And now Francis. It's a cross by him. George Berry miscuing. Peter Daniel getting it away, Willie Carr helping it on, Bowyer playing it down for McGovern, and now here's Robertson. Inside for Ian Bowyer again, what a terrible bobble, but it gives him another option, and that's to find David Needham. Wolves have pulled everybody except John Richards back now, as Francis tries to find something across the face of the goal there. Goal kick to Wolves. it'll be time to start looking at watches but there's still something like 21 minutes to go and the time will fly through those 21 minutes for these fellas no foul an advantage play Peter Daniel trying to get Richards through this time but Kenny Burns there calmly nodding it down for David Needham now Frank Bray. Robertson. McGovern. Anderson. Played for Francis. That's a free kick to Forrest. I think we should see a lot more of Trevor Francis now popping up in the Wolves penalty area. Not so much of him down that right touchline. That's surely where he can do the most dangerous work. As it is, he's taking this free kick. David Needham's up in there. Kenny Burns is there, but it was the number 10 John Richards who got that one away. Another chance for Anderson to play it in this time. O'Neill didn't keep good enough control, and that's a goal kick. Francis on the touchline there, played in towards the near post, Berry getting there. Oh, Bertels playing it back! Well, that was so near to being... Oh, my goodness! Well, Wolves lived with the utmost danger there, and look at the frustration there on 
right in O'Neill's face. It looked for sure that suddenly it came out and Bertels played it there for Martin O'Neill. The shot somehow was charged down and it came back again. Bertels trying to get it in there, straight though into the arms of Paul Bradshaw. So Wolves certainly had their slice of good fortune there. A free kick again for Forrest. With about 18 minutes left. Martin O'Neill. Well, that could go anywhere. It's now with Peter Daniel. Colin Brazier warming up for Wolves. But at the moment, Wolves are being penned back as Frank Gray finds John Robertson. Francis getting up there with a head, and Parkin getting it away with a boot. Needham, Willie Carr, McGovern, Forrest searching as hard as they can for the opening that will bring them something, and the referee saying that it was a bit of a dive by Trevor Francis after the challenge by Eminem Hughes. straight to Peter Daniel. Now Francis. Oh, what a good ball by Francis, and what a lovely run by Anderson. Played in again there if O'Neill can get there. But Emlyn Hughes performed superbly there for Wolves, but here's Anderson again with the cross. That time Berry's holding him at play. McGovern playing it again for Anderson, looking maybe to get the cross in. No, it's Francis who tries. Now Anderson with a bit of space, maybe. McGovern now for Nottingham Forest. Played in this time for Martin O'Neill. Wolves denying him a chance, really, of a sight at that goal. Francis once more. Trying to get to the byline, cut out by Mel Eves, but a corner for Forrest. 16 minutes to go. David Needham coming up again. His mix-up with Peter Shilton. Being the cause of Forrest being a goal down, now Needham's going to try and put that right. Bertels with a little back heel, Bertels again, but straight into the arms of Bradshaw. Well, certainly Paul Bradshaw has not had any really spectacular saves to make, but his positioning has been absolutely first class. Gray. And now Daniel. Hibbert trying to play it through, Robertson. That'll come for Bowyer though. Francis away on the right. Well, Peter Taylor trying to... Trying to, yes, he may have lip read that. If, I, if I'm right, it was Trevor, Trevor down the line. Peter Taylor's words to the Nottingham Forest number 10. Trevor. You can't make him here. And it's not easy from there, to be honest. A fair bit of squirming on seats there on that Wolves side also. Richie Barker and John Barnwell. A fantastic afternoon it will be for them and the club if they could pull Wolves through this and into a place in Europe next year. Oh, there's a bit of subdued shouting and not much more from the forest end. The real noise is coming from the Wolves end of the field. A free kick now to the Wolves. Hughes now for Eves. There's the cross, and there's Shaw. Inside the last quarter of an hour. Robertson, the little touchdown for Bowyer. Francis away on the right there. Well, 
Peter Taylor told him to go down the line. It's Anderson playing it in again. Here's McGovern, or rather uh, O'Neill. Francis again with that little cross coming in towards Robertson, but it was Kenny Hibbert who just lifted himself enough to get it away from the Forest man. And here's Peter Daniel. It was his long free kick that led to that goal for Wolves. But his contribution really has been enormous, Peter Daniel. A real all-action man. And here's Kenny Burns. Anderson. Little ball for Francis. O'Neill wanting it down the line. Gets it there. Hughes obstructing him and a free kick to Forrest. League Cup winners medal, the only domestic honour really that's eluded uh, this man, Emlyn Hughes. And at the moment he's something like 13 minutes away from getting it. Forrest free kick. Trevor Francis will take it. Needham and Kenny Burns are up in that box. There, there was a bit of pushing as they went in. It's a free kick towards. Well, it's been a good afternoon for Paul Bradshaw. He's not really put a foot wrong, but it's been a uncharacteristically nervous afternoon for Peter Shorten. There's no question about that. But here's Hibbert, four walls, and outside him, Peter Daniel, taking it towards the byline, and that's a good cross as well, but it's still in play, Richards playing it back again for Willie Carr, looking to get to the byline again, gets a corner instead. Hibbert with the corner. George Berry with the back reflect. Did that hit the post or what? Willie Carr, that certainly hit Viv Anderson. And a chance now for a breakaway for Forrest, led by the speed of Trevor Francis. George Berry is after him, and Francis going on well, but couldn't quite get it to Martin O'Neill. So Parkin just darted in there and saved the situation for Wolves. Kenny Burns, John Robertson, Bertels, and a foul on Gary Bertels, giving Forrest the free kick. coming in and John Richards getting it away but they pushed everybody forward Forrest Kenny Burns right up there so well and dived in by Francis but well he got in bravely there Trevor Francis after Kenny Burns had got up so well there's Burns's header and Francis suddenly spotting that something might be on but he couldn't quite get the right touch the man they would least want to lose with nine minutes left and a goal down and referee Richardson having a little bit of goalkeeper and Richie Barker coming out just making sure Wolves keep on their toes and keep thinking and concentrating and John Barnwell has another look at his watch knowing that they're inside the last ten minutes Foul by McGovern on Willie Carr, a free kick for Wolves. And not a lot 
being said there. Richards, can he get a turn and get a shot in? Can Peter Daniel get a shot in? The ricochet's going everywhere, and in the end, Peter Shelton diving to keep the ball from going over and then finding Robertson with this throw. Oh, a slack shot there, a slack pass there by Robertson, but he's won it back again. It looked like a shove in the back that got it back for him. Anderson. Francis. Wolves keep it again. Emlyn Hughes backpedalling, finding Bradshaw. O'Neill. And Boya almost in there. And in the end, it's Palmer who got it away. Horace throw. Frank Gray with it. McGovern. About seven minutes remaining. O'Neill. Frank Gray. Horrendous bobble there, but in fact it still fell out of Frankie Gray's way. Robertson. Oh, McGovern's in a bit of space. And so here is Kenny Burns. Wolves have come out quickly, hoping to catch him offside. O'Neill. In the end, it's Palmer who gets it into touch. Robertson floated in there and it was Berry who got that one away good strong solid game George Berry and it's another throw to Forrest tension really reaching its height here now with Wolves with five minutes left needing to hold on just that short amount of time but Robertson putting it across, and Bradshaw grabbing it well. George Berry having a little hug of his goalkeeper too, well done. Well, anybody who remembers the FA Cup final when Arsenal looked home and dry with five minutes to go last year would know that just what can happen in the last minutes of a cup tie. Oh, he's got a bad cut right eye there, John Richards. I haven't seen how that happened. But he's quite happy to go on for the moment. And why not with Wolves leading 1-0, but Bertels now attacking them again. And that crosses behind, it's a goal kick. Some terrible luck with injuries, John Richards, over the last three or four years, but to come here twice and to win twice is quite something, and that's what's on the cards for him now, 1974 and 1980. It's amazing, really, when you think of the turnover of players in most clubs that six years ago the two goal scorers on that day, Hibbert and Richards, are both in the Wolf side, as indeed are Farmer and Parkin. They've also survived a span of six years and two wins. And Richards very nearly getting into a position to add a second one there, but he's got a corner.
Played wide for Parkin, a nice move that. And Parkin with room to get a shot in, and a deflection that in fact falls for its way. And Frank Gray now setting up another challenge. Bertels away on the left, Francis away on the right. Bertels, oh, the ball passed poorly there for Robertson. The momentum was lost for a moment, and Wolves have got back in strength. But here's Bowyer. Played for McGovern. And here's Robertson. A little cross coming in, Anderson was right in there. And Bowyer with a shot! Oh! And look at those two on the floor there, smiling all over their face because somehow, and that luck didn't go Peter Shilton's way, somehow that ball was snuggled under the body of Paul Bradshaw when Ian Bowyer shot. And they sat on it. A free kick. Poor refereeing. An advantage clearly could have been given there with Forrest comfortably in possession. O'Neill. And also poor play by Martin O'Neill. About two minutes to go. Very clumping it forward to eat up a few more seconds. McGovern telling Needham to play it wide to Anderson. Bertels with a chance to turn on it. Kenny Burns going right in there, but Perry whacking that one away into touch as well. About 90 seconds left. can't recall a great deal of problem. One little stoppage for injury when Trevor Francis went down in the second half, but there can't be a lot left. Now Frank Gray. Here's John Robertson. Are we going to see one last burst from him? Played in there towards O'Neill. And it might come yet. No, Wolves still got that one away. Richards then playing it straight back to O'Neill. Now Robertson. Wolves still hanging on. Bradshaw with the catch above the bodies of Burns and Needham. And Emlyn Hughes knows that Wolves are almost there. We're in the final minute. On the Wolves bench, they're already saying that time is up just to urge their team into one last effort to make absolutely sure. But there are still a few seconds yet. As Anderson takes it up again for Wolves, Francis away on the right touchline for Forrest. And a throw to Forrest. Wolves have brought everybody back now. Forrest have pushed everybody except their fullback Frank Gray forward. Anderson. Francis. Needham tried to get the shot in and a corner giver. And this surely is going to be the last chance. We're into injury time. A place in Europe awaits Wolves if they can keep this corner out. And it comes to McGovern. Played wide for Robertson. The little dink cross in there, and it'll come to McGovern again. But the ball just squelched away from him. Well into injury time now. And still Forrester coming forward, hoping to get this equaliser. The referee's looking at his watch. Wolves have done it. They hug each other on the Wolves bench. Richie Barker and John Barnwell, they're hugging each other all over the floor there. Edmund Hughes with a smile on his face. Look at the Berry and Hughes there. And Andy Gray's goal is the one that's decided it all. And at last, the Football League Cup final win for Edmund Hughes. Andy Gray, the scorer. Look at the delight on those Wolves faces. What a great game it is at a moment like this. Wolves the winners. Mel Eames there. Emmett Hughes going across to have a word with Peter Shilton. His old England buddy. And with the referee. And there are a few happy people 
from Wolverhampton in the crowd there. And what a day for John Barnwell, hugging uh, Emlyn Hughes there. The big decision to buy Andy Gray for a million pounds, well, that came off because Andy Gray scored the goal. John McCall there, the injured player. Well, and there Brian Clough, for once, is just an onlooker with Peter Taylor. And the losers go up first to collect their medals. to the dressing room to think about their next appearance which is in Berlin on Wednesday night in the European Cup. Andy Gray with a winner's smile. Well, Brian Clough and Peter Taylor go off towards the dressing room. Dynamo Berlin in the European Cup on Wednesday night is their next thought. Too many moments like this. John Barwell having gone up to the Royal Box. George Berry and John Richards. <laughs> 